this is Dan Hawkins of The Darkness, and you're watching Premier Guitars, The Big Five. My favorite guitar is not a Les Paul. It is this guitar. It's an Epiphone. It's an Epiphone three, oh, not three, it's a casino. That's what it is. Just saw the label on the back. Yeah, it's a 1964 Epiphone Casino. Play is great with a, a Bixby fitted after the event of its birth. Um, it's got some P90s in it. Uh, it had its um, neck broken when we were on tour with Lady Gaga. The lighting designer uh, lowered the truss onto my guitar rack and it snapped it clean in half. Um, and I don't know if you can see, but it's been beautifully repaired. And weirdly, it came back playing better than it than it was. So um, don't despair if you uh, break the neck of a 1960s guitar. I've had this guitar since 2009, 2010 actually, because it was um, when the band reformed after our hiatus. And I was in Brighton, which is in the south of England on the seafront, and I was uh, uh, walking past the guitar shop uh, called um, Gag, and it was in the window. And I've always wanted to try a casino because um, I'm a big fan of um, uh, the band Teenage Fan Club, you know, in particular their, their early albums. And I just love, also I, I love the Beatles, uh, more importantly. But, um, and this was the, the 64 was actually was the year that they they got there and they went from Gretsch's to to all playing these uh, Epiphone casinos, and the the, the reason being um, apparently is that the bases they're they're completely hollow, so there's no, there's nothing inside them at all. Not, it's just one big open kind of uh, chamber, which made them which makes them really resonant and really loud. So you you don't even need to plug it in to kind of. Uh, to play it and write a song. So they were writing songs in the back of trains and, and wherever they could during that period and, and these guitars really helped them to do that. But anyway, so yeah, I, I um, as a rule, I never ever enter guitar shops because I know what happens next, you know. <laughs> I've, I've bought and sold enough guitars to know that I, I should never enter one. So, um, but it was pretty cheap because it was player's grade. It was just kind of beaten up and, and I didn't really expect it to you know, play that well. I didn't know what it would sound like. Um, and it was just one of those things that, that I literally plugged in and within three minutes, I, I knew I had to buy it and I couldn't stop playing it. I was in there for about an hour. I have never played a casino beforehand and I haven't played a casino since. I've only played this one, so I've got nothing to compare it to. It probably doesn't even sound like a casino. It probably, is, it probably sounds like, um, you know, it might not have any, any original features left. But um, whatever it is, I love it. And um, since I bought it, I haven't done anything to it apart from have the head repaired. I've literally not changed a thing. I don't think I even changed the action or um, anything about it. It's I'm almost afraid to because you know you look at it and and you just think, well, it's just going to fall apart. But this thing does not go out of tune, and I don't know why. It's um, I've never had a big speed that that I've been able to use live and, I, and I've, um, I've toured this loads and, and it stays in tune better than my list pulls. It's bizarre. The only thing I would like to say about this guitar is um, if you haven't tried a casino, not that I can attest to what other casinos sound like, um, you should try one because it has a sound of its own. It's not a 335. It's a bit brighter and janglier um, and it just has its own thing. You know, it's quite hard to put your finger on what it is, but um, it's really got a lot going for it. So if, uh, if you're thinking of like a, a, a hollow body, kind of semi-acoustic or um, electro-acoustic, then, then uh, maybe give one of these a go. My Desert Island album, that's really, really tough, but I think the one album that I've always come back to throughout my listening to music career <laughs> Uh, would be Rumours by Fleetwood Mac. And I know it's pretty safe, I'm sure. I mean, it being one of the biggest selling albums of all time, there's 
probably a hundred million other people who who would have that as their um their uh, desert island disc but i've never got bored of it i've every time i've i've ever heard anything from that album and i mean any song from that album it's always made me feel warm and safe and glad to be alive so yeah if i was on a desert island i think that's what you need the thing is i'm, I'm such a um positive guy i like i'm trying to find something negative about you know the, about other people that i don't like and i find it really hard but um and especially with guitarists because everyone's got their own thing going on and and like um you know i'm as obsessed with pedals as as anyone else is i bought every single delay pedal that's ever been made and sold them all and then bought more and sold them you know um so i don't know i'm i'm exactly the same as every other guitar geek every tour that we do i'm on the phone to my guitar tech making his life a misery we're ordering loads of stuff in we're breaking the old rig down we're rewiring it you know let's try gold connectors this time let's just like anything to make it even slightly better when deep down i know it doesn't make any difference at all <laughs> it's like you know i play a full pelt into a marshal nothing's going to make that much difference um so I guess my main pet peeve is with myself and others. Like, why do we have to be so geeky about it all? Why can't you just stop and just play and just get on with it? But no, we have to keep, keep digging for what might be the ultimate tone when it doesn't actually exist. Which guitar hero of mine would shock or surprise my fans? I guess there's a guy called Richard Thompson. I don't know if anyone knows about that guy um, in the rock world. If, if maybe if um, someone's watching this because they're a Darkness fan, they probably wouldn't necessarily know who he was, but um, or is. But um, he's an incredible guitarist that I was fortunate enough to tour with. I toured with Richard Thompson in about 2000 when I was a session musician. I wasn't in Richard Thompson's band, I should add. I was in this poor act. I was a session musician playing with... Uh, this lady called Liz Horsman, and it was um, just her and I. I was playing acoustic, she was singing, and um, I think we had a keyboard player as well, actually. Uh, and yeah, it was it was uh, my first proper tour. And it really just blew me away, you know, like um, I had not heard anything about him or Fairport Convention or his folk roots, or I just thought it's just gonna be I don't know. I've always been a bit of a punk rocker, so I just thought it'd be some old, old fuddy duddy and, and like, you know, just hit the bar and whatnot. And um <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. Like his playing was unbelievable and yeah, it really opened my eyes to to a, a, a lot of things. And and um I'd watch him every night and, and I kind of tried I, I still try to follow his technique, the way that he does his his pull-offs and hammer-ons and things like that. And it's kind of a folk rock type thing, I suppose, but um, if you get a chance, check him out. My secret weapon, because I would immediately think a piece of gear or like a pedal or something like that, but I'd say the thing that's that I've stuck with and has become part of me is this. Oh. <laughs> this is the most boring thing. You'd be so disappointed. This is a uh, Jim Dunlop. USA Nylon 73, right? So every single guitarist I know laughs at me when I, when I, when they think, you can't be playing with a 73 nylon. It's like just bendy, it doesn't do anything. And um, everyone plays with hard plectrums. Every single person I know, apart from me. Um, but the reason I do is because um, I play really, really hard. And half of the, um, half of the thing is I kind of, when you play with one of these, you're really playing with your fingers. It's more of a finger protector than a plectrum. So I'm kind of striking through and hitting the string with my thumb at the same time. So you have a real, and it means you can really, really hit it. And you don't break strings, but you, it means you can really swing your arm at it like you're on a building site. <laughs> so if you want to play guitar like you're on a building site, get the wobbliest uh, sort of oh, there it goes, pansiest plectrum you can and hit your guitar really hard. <laughs>